So hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me on the first barbell session of the season. We're on the banks of the beautiful River Severn and hopefully we can make contact with Mr. Barbell. So conditions wise, the river has been low and clear for quite a while. Temperatures since the start of the season have been over 20 degrees, but today, Sunday, we're around about 10 to 12 degrees. And when I was looking at the forecast, I did target today as a day to come down. A bit of rain yesterday, I'm hoping it's gonna give the river a bit of a spice up and hopefully those barbel will go on the feed. Before we get into the video, I just wanna say thank you to everybody that subscribes to the channel, leaves nice comments on the channel and likes the videos. It really is appreciated, so thank you very much. If you are new around here, there's a new video goes on the channel every Friday at six o'clock. So well worth a subscribe if you wanna hit that link below and subscribe to the channel. On to the fishing, let's take a look at the swim, the bait and the setup that we're gonna use. I've just got the rods in and we'll go over the setups in a minute but set up on a nice shaded area of the river plenty of pace because I think at this time of the year they won't be long off spawning and yeah you can see there plenty of pace on the river just watching those rod tips and so you don't miss Mr Barbel bites but yeah it's beautiful to be back on the banks of the River Severn chasing barbel. And hopefully, well the target is one barbel. You know, conditions are low and clear. So yeah, hopefully we can get a barbel on the bank. So tactics wise, as you guys know on the channel, I'm a huge fan of hemp. So I've got quite a bit there of the Hinders hemp. You see, nice big bucket. I'm a great believer that you can't feed too much hemp you know everything in the river eats it and yeah it's a great bait for holding fish and when I'm barbel fishing yeah I always bring loads of it with me to plug the ground bait feeder we've got the hinders barbel bomb ground bait as you can see there a nice dark mix and lots of the little pellets in it we're going to be putting pellets in the feeder so I've got some of the really small pellets there and they're going to be going in the feeder and they are my hook baits you can see there the medium and large baits from from hinders and when i come to the peg this morning there was a a bottle of um is it lava from sonia baits <laughs> on the peg i'm a great believer in um fate so it's Father's Day, my dad's still here but my mum isn't and I take everything as a sign. So I've poured a load of that over them hook baits. Like I say, I take everything as a sign. Looking at the swim, we've got a couple of snags on the far bank. Not loads, um, but enough cover. I'm going to start off doing, I'm going to feed hemp heavy down the middle because yeah if I feed the hemp here it's going to fall and coat the bottom downstream and the right hand rod I'm going to put tight over that far bank you know close to the snags zoom in you can just see there is some slack water over that far bank you can see the snag there so that right hand rod is going to be going in that bit there Quickly going over the setup, I've got my Corum Excalibur rods in 1.75 pound test curve, 4000 Xenos reels with 12 pound line. Both rods are exactly the same, and yeah, I'm going to be sat back here now just watching those tips and hoping that one of them arches round. So, in these early parts of the session, casting every 10 15 minutes just to get some bait in the swim there's plenty of people on the stretch and i want to make sure that there's plenty of bait going through my bit of the swim while the rig's out the water we'll take a quick look at it you see there i got a bolt and run kit got cage feeder you can see there the back of it is covered so i'm hoping in the fast water it's going to hold them pellets in till they get to the bottom We've got some 10 pound fluorocarbon 
and that's down to a size 14 Corum Grappler and on there we've got a banded pellet. That's a quick look at the setup we're using and to keep making those casts to begin with and also making sure I feed plenty of that hemp over the top as well. No. Be keeping it going in little and often and making sure you've got that bait going through the swim. So one thing that I do do when I'm fishing the banded pellet is have the pellet really close to the hook. Now I know some people move that pellet further away if they're fishing for barbel because they don't want to catch chub and roach and stuff like that. For me, I'm not picky. I want to catch Mr. Chub, Mr. Roach and Mr. Barbel. So I always put the band really tight to the hook. So on the third cast, we've just had one hell of a mighty bang on that left hand rod. Been fishing probably about half an hour. And yeah, if you do barbel fishing, it was one of those plucks that is enough to make you go for the rod, but then it bounces back. So yeah, there's definitely some fish in the swim. So it's taken about an hour of just constant casting and the rod down the middle has just absolutely melted away feels like we're into the first barbel and every year you just forget how savage the takes are and how much power they have especially in this water you can see it just out there it is a barbel and yeah every time you do forget and there we go the first barbell of the season and yeah it's taking about half an hour to an hour of just keeping the bait going in feeding that hemp heavy like you guys know i do love me hemp and yeah just coming straight down the middle great fight and you forget don't you just how much they do fight traveling down the a49 you always hope just to get one so anything else today is going to be a bonus and as i always say the most important thing is to give them a good rest you know get your rod ready to cast back in by all means but just take the time give it all don't they and yeah the beauty of a nice deep net you give him plenty of time and we'll leave him there till he's fighting to get out and ready to go and when they're ready to go, they'll let you know. You can see there, fighting to get out the net. More than ready to go. And back he goes. So mega pleased to get that barbel. But sitting here with the rods back out, I feel like I've made one huge mistake today. I spooled up me reel last night with eight pound line and I picked up my core and glide this morning and put it back down thinking just stick to doing one method and try and do it the best you can and I'm absolutely gutted that I did that because this here looks absolutely beautiful for trotting some meat down so I'll most definitely be back with the float rod so the swim that we were fishing was down there and for the evening or the afternoon I've just moved up up the gravel and there's a lot more snags here as you can see got the right hand rod on a piece of meat and the left hand rod is on the same feeder that you've seen before it's been quite slow I did think we would have had more bites down there but kept casting kept putting the hemp in and yeah it's just the way it goes so fingers crossed in this swim we can get a bite The moving swims really paid off that far bank rod tight to the snag really hooped over and yeah this didn't mess about the second barbell of the session and boy am i glad i made that journey today a lovely bronze barbell from the river seven let's get it straight back like earlier big net give them plenty of time to rest do not half put a fight up this guy's been in the net now for about 10 minutes and we'll let him go back he goes
so to say it's been a tough day on the bank is an understatement since that second barbel it's been really quiet keep casting keeping that bait going in and hopefully we're going to be rewarded with mr barbel so there we go not the biggest barbel in the world but boy is he welcome been sat for a few hours kept on casting putting the hemp in and sometimes you just need to keep at it and you get a reward there's about an hour of the session left i'm going to get the rod back out but if this is the last fish i hope you've enjoyed this week's blog i want to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing and i'll catch you all next week tight lines